the July Revolution of 1830, also known as the Three Glorious Days. This was a time of chaos, violence, destruction, and rebellion for the people of France. This rebellion specifically took place in Paris. Liberals and revolutionaries rebelled against the French monarchy. The country had grown displeased with Charles X, who limited freedom of the press and concentrated power in the crown. Within three days in July, the capital fell to the revolutionaries who wanted to establish a republic. The revolution was brought on when Napoleon Bonaparte advocated the throne in 1814. Louis XVI then took his place and his power was restored. He ruled as King of France from 1814 to 1824 until his death. Since he had no children, the throne was given by hereditary privilege to his brother, Charles X, who decided to revoke the reforms King Louis XVI had input and put in unreasonable restrictions on France. For example, he put a censorship on newspapers, he excluded the commercial middle class from future elections to benefit himself, and suspended freedom of the press. This led the people of France to revolt. Riots began on Tuesday, July 27th of 1830 and lasted until July 29th, hence the Three Glorious Days. The people of France were also frustrated due to the fact that the throne was given by hereditary privilege as opposed to popular consent of the people, which was also a part of the cause of the revolution. During the Three Glorious Days, somewhere between 7,000 and 8,000 Parisians took over the streets and built over 4,000 barricades, which they used to defend themselves against the royal guards. They also used barrels filled with earth, timber, and cobblestones from the streets. They defended themselves against about 12,000 members of the royal guard. They were so successful in this defense that Charles X was forced to step down and Louis Philippe, the Duke of New Orleans became the King of the French because he agreed to be more of a constitutional monarch than Charles X was. The impact of this revolution stimulated the French Romantic artist Eugène Delacroix to produce one of his most influential paintings. Liberty Leading the People This painting is a commemoration of the Three Glorious Days. It was actually painted during the revolution and took Delacroix three months to finish. It was officially titled in French, La Liberté Guidant du Peuple. Its size is 102.4 inches by 128 inches, so it is quite large. It currently resides in the Louvre Museum in Paris and it is an oil on canvas painting. The focal point is this personification of liberty. She's depicted as goddess-like, yet she is still approachable in her humanity, which is important in the sense that there is this idea that the revolution is reaching out to everyone, the common man included. She is symbolic of the struggle that all the Parisians were fighting for. She is treading on top of corpses and looks as if she is heading towards the viewer. She is wearing a modest covering, which is called a Phrygian cap. This cap represents freedom and goes all the way back to ancient Roman times where newly freed slaves were given them to wear as a symbol of their own liberation. As Liberty stands on top of a pedestal composed of the dead, she clutches in one hand a gun, which alludes to her authority as leader, and in the other hand she hoists high the French tricolor flag. Something interesting to think about is that she is holding the flag of her people above the gun showing emphasis on her humanity over war. Also, it is important to know that this tricolor flag has not always been the French flag. At the time this painting was produced, the French flag was actually this white flag because Charles X banned the tricolor flag and the white flag represented the monarchy. The tricolor flag represented liberty and was adopted as the national flag after this rebellion. In Delacroix's painting, the flag and the colors of it are everywhere. We can see the flag in the background, on this man's belt, this man's entire outfit, and the sky itself is blue, white, and red. 
We can also see the Cathedral of Notre Dame in the distance. Notre Dame was a symbol of the monarchy and conservatism, and yet Delacroix represents at the top of one of its towers the tricolor flag of the revolutionaries. We can also see that Liberty is wearing a dress that resembles a Roman tunic and exposes her breasts. Through the lenses of gender study, the fact that her breasts are visible is a reference to antiquity, the birth of democracy to ancient Greece and Roman Republican tradition. There are many implied lines in this painting. They all point towards liberty and frame her and her body. There is also a lot of visual texture in this painting. The fog, the smoke, and the clouds all look extremely realistic, almost as if you can feel it floating past your face. The flag also looks extremely realistic and looks like actual fabric and it is showing movement. Through the lenses of Marxism, we can see that there are many Parisians from different social classes. In the painting, we can see gentlemen, children, royal guards, and the fallen. The man on the left of Liberty is wealthy based on his manner of dress and his top hat. To the right of Liberty, there is a boy carrying two pistols, who is more indicative of the French middle class. Delacroix exemplifies a wide variety of people from all walks of social life who have all come together and left their homes in the city to fight for and pursue their shared interest and dream, liberty. Delacroix is trying to represent the spirit and the character of the people rather than glorify the actual event. This is a self-portrait of Eugène Delacroix, and he is known in many ways as a marking point or a game changer between the Age of Enlightenment and Romanticism. Enlightenment, also known as the Age of Reason, was a significant period in Europe where the human ability to reason was glorified. Its key principles were reason, knowledge, progress, freedom, and equality. Romanticism was a historical art movement that greatly colored how people felt and looked at the world. It stressed strong emotion, imagination, freedom from classical art forms, and rebellion against social conventions. In Delacroix's painting, or even Romanticism in general, is the antithesis of Neoclassicism, which was a movement that was confined to the idea of order, balance, and restraint. In Romantic paintings, there is a huge de-emphasis on precise drawing and much more attention to loose, free brushstrokes. That's what Romanticism is all about. It's not confined to the academic tradition of the Neoclassicists. Delacroix is one of the most famous romantic artists and used this technique in his other paintings such as this painting which is called The Death of a Sardanapalus and this painting which is called The Bark of Dante. The legacy of this painting remains today through the Statue of Liberty in New York City. The sculptor of the Statue of Liberty, Frederic Auguste Bartholdi, saw inspiration from Liberty and Delacroix's painting. It has also been used as the cover of the Coldplay album, Viva la Vida. This is my artwork. I titled it Opportunity. I made this artwork with a blank canvas, red and blue ribbon, and white stars to create the American flag as the background. I drew and carved out Lady Liberty on green construction paper and pasted her over the flag. I was actually influenced by two artists. One was Delacroix and the other was a mouth painter named Antonio Davis. I recently attended his art presentation at Daly College and was inspired by one of his paintings of Muhammad Ali with the background of the American flag. He posted a video of him creating this artwork on social media along with one of Ali's quotes that read, he who is not courageous enough to take risks will accomplish nothing in life. This immediately reminded me of Delacroix's work because it depicted people who risked everything for their rights so they could have the opportunity to live better lives and with that no one could say that they didn't stand up for what they believed in. Girls know me and I'm